In late May 2008, a decade ago, um, there were many small supermarkets in Amsterdam that were out of fresh milk. This was not because of a cow strike, but because the mobile phone network had been down in most of the Netherlands for two days. Now, this was just after the introduction of the first iPhone, it seems forever ago. So most people didn't even notice, but many small supermarkets and other retailers were already using mobile data to run their logistics. And when these things failed, so did the logistics. No 3G, no fresh milk. So this wasn't the first time we had big failures like that, and it wouldn't also be the last, and I won't be the first one to tell you how important technology is. When computer systems and networks fail, everything stops today. Uh, we've been very dependent on electricity for decades, but certainly over the last 15 years, computers and computer networks has become just as vital to keep us safe, healthy, and of course in cat videos. <laughs> so we need to be able to protect ourselves and the people around us and the places we love. And this is one of the reasons why, with a journalist friend, I wrote this book, which is a free download online, um, to help train people to use open source security tools, to have privacy and anonymity when you need it, and to keep your secrets. I'm a digital defense instructor, and I train activists, journalists, lawyers, people around the world who need to be able to keep a secret and communicate securely to save lives. And the book is intended to help non-technical people to be able to do that on their own. Um, it's a free download in several languages, and you're also allowed to reuse the text. So if you want to make a version for 12-year-olds, go ahead. You don't need my permission. Now, to go a little bit into the problem, Europe buys the vast majority of its IT that we run our lives on um, from abroad. You know, US software and services, Chinese hardware. Not only is this costing us something like 250 billion euros a year, which is a couple of million jobs we don't have in Europe, it also means that we buy technology that is vital to us every second of every day, but we have no control over it. We don't know what it does on the inside, and all kinds of bad things could happen, and indeed have happened. So thanks to a series of courageous whistleblowers, of which Snowden was one of the more recent ones, we know now for sure that this stuff is being abused against us all the time. Um, China, the US, many other countries have espionage interests against Europe. Um, and so these things are being abused against our political and social interests. And of course, there's also a lot of economic espionage, meaning more money, more economic growth and wealth that we don't have in Europe. So this is one of the slides that Snowden gave us. And it shows how, um, in this case, the NSA thinks about this stuff. They have backdoored most major American IT products, so the stuff in your home, but also the stuff that you never see, but that you depend on nonetheless to get fresh milk, for instance. Um, so if you work in IT, you will know most of these brands. Many other people will at least recognize some of them. It tells us that all these things have been backdoored by design, intentionally. Um, and that makes spying a lot easier. So collecting information about the fact that you're all here now with your phones, listening to me. The NSA knows that now. If you're watching this on YouTube, the NSA knows this now. Sorry. Um, it also tells us that the NSA, with the budget of a small nation, makes really bad slides. <laughs> they need some help with that. But wait, it gets worse. It gets worse. It gets worse. Um, the NSA also makes digital weapons to attack the systems we do try to secure, and then it loses those weapons and other people make off with them. And this happens a couple of years ago, um, and then somebody turned around and turned one of these things into a weapon and uh, took down 40 hospitals in the UK, amongst other things. That was in May of 2017. A month later, another computer virus, also based on this lost weapons toolkit, took out, among other things, uh, a big chunk of the container uh, capacity in Rotterdam Harbor, which is one of the biggest harbors on this side of the planet. Um, and that meant you know, no new car parts, no new clothing, no feedstocks for those cows that make the milk for you. Um, this brings us the stuff that we need to survive. So the NSA's wish, in this case, to spy on the world, apparently mostly for economic and political reasons, has made us all a lot less safe. And this is a very big problem. Regrettably, none of all this spying has done the thing it was supposed to do, which is prevent terrorist incidents. Zero effect. 
This is research by both the US Congress and several other academic institutions. So it's not doing what it's supposed to do, it's just causing lots of other problems. Now, despite all of this now being out, you know, it's been in many newspapers for a couple of years now, it's no longer a secret, everybody knows. Um, that doesn't mean that it stops. In fact, the recent US government has sort of doubled down on the policy of collect everything and we'll sort it out later. And in order to collect everything, we need everything to be insecure. And then the fact that we're all insecure, well, you know, that's just bad luck for us. Also, thanks to Snowden, we know what does work. And that gives us the path forward to get out of this big hole we're in. Um, so there is light at the end of the tunnel, and that's what we need to work on. So we know what works. We need strong crypto systems, and we need new kinds of computers that are built in Europe for us, ideally by us, as close as possible to us, on sort of the open source philosophy where the computer you own, and that is in your home or in the hospital you visit, is accountable to you as an end user, not to some American commercial company and or the NSA. Now, it may seem like a big task to start using a completely new computer that today doesn't even exist yet and that you've never seen and that you've never used. But I'm absolutely certain that all of you can use, learn to use this new computer. Because you all have one of these, um, and they didn't exist 10 years ago, and you're all using those, and nobody got a special course in it. So it's completely obvious that you all can learn to use a new computer that didn't exist 10 years ago, because you already did it. So never underestimate your ability to learn new things when it comes to things like computers or many other areas. Now, some people might say, well, if we have all these new computers that are different from the other ones, then it won't work with all the other stuff. And I call BS on that. And my proof is the internet, which is billions of computers produced by tens of thousands of different companies, and it all works together. Why? Because of open standards, like a common language that makes everything talk to each other, even if different parties make it. Now, for the techies, I know the internet really looks like this, but let's keep that between us. <laughs> so if there's lots of fires, of course we should buy some fire trucks. And it's great if fire trucks come screeching down the road if there's a fire. But that is after the fact. And this is what many security products, like virus scanners and other things, do. You know, it's solving the problem and it's already exploded in your face. If the problem is that there are a lot of fires, maybe, teach people not to smoke in bed, and other forms of knowledge and behavioral change that allows them to make slightly smarter choices and not get into trouble. Marilyn, please don't smoke in bed. So I have deep faith in the idea that knowledge is power and that knowledge empowers people. And that is why I teach digital self-defense. It's not about the boxes and the technology products. It's about the knowledge that people have in their heads and that they share with others that allows them to protect themselves and protect people around them. Um, so everybody can contribute to this problem, and we're going to need everybody. So if you're a software engineer, amazing. You can work you know, on making the software better. If you're um, a graphics uh, person, maybe you can make it more shiny and more beautiful. If you're a linguist, help translate documents. Um, if you're a writer, you can maybe make them, make them, make them better. If you're a marketeer, we need to be made to make this aspirational for people, even sexy, hopefully. If you're a teacher, we're going to need a lot of teachers. So everybody can contribute a little bit to this problem. Now, it may seem that taking on the spying powers of global superpowers is a very daunting task, but we should never shy away from daunting tasks. That's what really you know, makes things worthwhile to do. So I have full faith that we can do this, and I invite you to be part of that solution. We can do this together.